this will be the third talk. The first one I did uh, generally on tachycardias. The second one I did on bradycardias. And today what I want to do is look focus uh, on um, the QRS complexes, okay? Um, and uh, I'm going to go through some ECGs uh, focusing on the different types of morphology of QRS complexes that you may come across. And hopefully at the end of this, it, you will, it will give you a better idea of how to approach um, uh, ECGs with abnormal looking QRS complexes, okay? Right, so let's get started. So um, for those of you who have attended my talk before, you know how I like to do this, um, but I'll just explain for those who haven't been on this talk, these talks before. So what I'm gonna do is go through some slides and I will pause at certain slides where there are ECGs and I'll give you the opportunity to um, look at them and then to put down your answers. Uh, you can just type in a chat message, chat box, what the, what the answer is, and then I will then go through the ECG, okay? Right, so some of you may have seen this uh, slide before. I've used it on my previous talks. So this just, just, this just basically shows, again, um, what the different complexes relate to in terms of the cycle uh, of uh, electrical activity in the heart itself, okay? So uh, today we're going to talk about the QRS complex. So I'm going to highlight this bit here in red. So that's the QRS complex. And um, it hopefully, uh, obviously, the QRS complex itself relates to ventricular depolarization, okay? So let me just go back to this, this particular uh, slide. So the QRS complex re relates to ventricular depolarization. So it's basically this part, uh, of the uh, cardiac cycle itself, when the ventricles are electrically activated, okay? And um, and you can see that's what it refers to here. Now, after depolarization, you're gonna get repolarization, okay? And just remember that ventricular repolarization happens after, obviously it sounds very obvious, but just remember it's a sequential it, it happens in sequence, okay? You need to have ventricular depolarization first before you have ventricular repolarization. And therefore also bear in mind that any abnormality in ventricular depolarization can also lead to abnormalities and in ventricular repolarization. Just bear that in mind, okay? All right. So, right, let's focus a little bit more on the, on the actual kind of uh, structures involved in cardiac conduction. So we're gonna really be talking about this area here when we talk about the rest complex. So as the electrical activation emerges from the bundle of his, it's going to come down through the fascicles here. So you've got the right bundle here on the right side, and obviously you have the left bundle, which is made up of the left anterior fascicle and the left posterior fascicle, okay? Uh, and um, it's important to recognize that the reason why there is a new normal QRS complex is because you have activation down this um, specialized conduction tissue. All right. So I'm going to start with this ECG, all right, just to get you warmed up, so to speak. All right. So what does this ECG show? So I'm going to give you a minute. I'll just look at my timer here. Anyone just um, put down on the text box what they think it shows. Okay, I think uh, it's, it's, it's obviously very clear to everyone. Everyone's starting to put the answers down. Absolutely, this is a, a sort of normal sinus rhythm, okay? Uh, and I just wanted to, to, to show this as the first slide because it's obviously very important to get, it sounds very obvious, but it, it is very important just to recognize why we, why we call this normal rhythm and why this QRS complex is normal. So some of you noted that it is, it is you know, on the slow side and that I would agree with you. I think if you were to calculate the rate, it is, it is under um, five big squares. So that is various ways that you can calculate heart rate, but this heart rate is under 60 beats per minute. It's between 50 to 60 beats per minute. So it is, as you call it, bradycardia, sinus bradycardia. But I guess in terms of the rhythm, in terms of the rhythm, it's a normal rhythm. It's a sinus rhythm, right? And uh, importantly also, because we were talking about QRS complexes here, I want you just to point out the QRS complex here. So you can see here, in fact, that the QRS complex is normal. And when it's normal, um, we typically say that obviously 
it has a very narrow appearance, okay? Uh, narrow means, by definition, less than 120 milliseconds. But in fact, when you look very carefully at it, it's actually, you know, normal, it's actually much, it's actually closer of the two small squares. You can see it often doesn't take, it's just a little bit over two small squares. So typically, it's even closer to 100 milliseconds. So QRS complex, normal QRS complex, uh, generally, as you know, is narrow, okay? And it's important to, to know why. Go back to this figure again. Just show you this. So just remember, it, it relates to the so QRS complex, as I said, is ventricular depolarization, and it relates to the duration, the time it takes for the ventricles, both ventricles, to depolarize. And so normal, when it goes down the normal Hispagenji system, will occur, you know, less than 120 milliseconds, closer in fact to about 100 or so milliseconds. Very very quick. Very very. Um, Kind of what we call near simultaneous activation of both the right and left ventricle because of the system where you have um, sort of in effect conduction to both the right and the left in parallel okay so just bear that in mind that's normal right so what about this one what does this ECG show I'll give you a minute Okay, the answers are coming in. I think most of you got it. Give me another 10 seconds or so to look at this ECG. Okay, so have a swig of my water. Okay, so most of you have got sinus rhythm with right bundle branch block or right bundle branch block as you put down as the notable uh, abnormality here. So, um, so, so, someone mentioned sinus tachycardia. This, this is clearly sinus rhythm. Okay, it goes without saying. This is sinus rhythm. Why? Because uh, you can see a P wave, and there's a curious complex following each each um, uh, P wave. So, when we say it's sinus rhythm, it just means that the rhythm originates from the um, sinoatrial node. So, you get um, a P wave, and then you see a curious complex that follows each of these P waves. So, conduction in this case is going down the AB node emerging from the his bundle. But what is different here is this appearance of the, oops, sorry, wrong one, is the appearance of the QRS complex. So clearly you can see the appearance is quite different from this. And uh, you know, all of you put right bundle branch block down. In fact, that is correct. Uh, for those of you who can't, who don't understand how to recognize this, don't worry. I'm gonna talk more about it afterwards. Right, what about this one? What is this? Let me give you another minute. Okay, I think most of you um, have come up with the answer. Okay, uh, so a lot of you've all pretty much all the answers there have got life bundle branch block, and that is correct. Now, a lot of you have also, you know, given the full answer. Um, uh, you, you've also mentioned the rhythm, which is sinus rhythm. This is interesting. Okay, um, so I'm just going to draw a line here. I mean, the talk today is concentrating on QRS complex, so I'm not going to spend too much time. But I do want to point it out to you. So I hope you can see my line, okay? I'm just going to draw it first, and then I'll tell you why it is I'm drawing here.
Okay, so the, if you look at the, I hope you can see my blue line. Uh, I think you should be able to. Uh, so you can see on the rhythm strip here on V1, okay? The, the, the complexes which I've highlighted with my blue line, okay, these are curious complexes which are preceded by P waves. Can you see? So, so indeed, the, the areas that I've highlighted with blue line, those are uh, beats with sinus rhythm, yeah? Uh, you know, uh, P wave followed by curious complex, sinus P waves, uh, and you can see this is sequential activation from the atrium originating from the sinus node going under the ventricle. Uh, you've correctly pointed out this QRS complex looks abnormal, and you told me that's left on the branch block. We'll talk about this in a minute. So I'm going to ask you then, what are these beats here, which are, I'm just going to just draw this, put it back. So what are these beats I'm going to now circle? Um, Circle here. What is this beat? And uh, what is this beat? What are these two beats? Oh, sorry, move out of the way. Yeah. These two beats look different, right? What are those two beats? Okay, someone's put PVC. Right. Uh, why don't you keep that in mind first, right? I guess the question I'm asking you, are these beats any different from the sinus beats? Exactly. They're in fact completely identical, right? If you look, these beats are completely identical. Okay. Uh, you can even see it, for example, uh, can we see it in other, in, any other? You can't really see it. You can only see it here. You can see, uh, you can see it here as well, I think. Okay, but anyway, these beats, these beats look exactly identical to the preceding sinus beat. So when it's, it's, it's an ectopic beat, okay, it's a, it's a premature complex. It's premature because it comes a bit earlier than where the next sinus beat would have landed. But it is atrial rather than ventricular because the appearance looks exactly identical from the um, uh, preceding sinus beats. So what all it means is that um, I can see why Tamika suggested it's ventricular because it's broad. But in fact, all the beats are broad. OK, um, and so because this looks exactly like the sinus beat. So this is actually an, it, 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 it's of atrial origin. Okay, or supraventricular origin. So it's actually a Sanjeev is correct. These are actually premature beats. Okay, so good spot there. Right. So now you've seen the types of different QRS complex that you can get. Okay, we've seen those. Let's go a little bit into the theory now, and hopefully all of you will understand how to um, how to describe and how to basically differentiate between left bundle and right bundle. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to start with this now. It may be may or may not be apparent to you. Um, if it's not, I hope it will be apparent now. Um, you obviously, when you put a, when you do a twelve lead ECGs, um, there are what we call limb leads, okay, and limb leads are here in blue, okay. Can you see ABR, ABL, one, two, sorry, sorry, because one, two, three, ABR, ABL, and ABF, okay. So one, two, three, ABR, ABL, ABF, in blue. Um, this is what was called the limb leads, and it's basically cutting through the heart on the frontal plane. Okay, then you have here in red. Can you see that in red you have these arrows pointing out in red, and it's got V one all the way to V six. Okay, so six limb leads, and um, you get six chest leads. That together gives you a twelve lead ECG. All right, and. It's very important to understand the concept that, in fact, what you're looking at with limb leads and chest leads are two different planes of the heart. So here I'm going to make it even more obvious, hopefully. So here again, this is the limb leads. Can you see this is your heart and how it's slicing the heart in this sort of frontal plane? OK, so it looks at electrical activation in this frontal plane. It's very good at looking at things that is going from up to down, from high to low. OK, so-called the superior inferior axis. This sort of this sort of plane, okay. 
this sort of top, up and down plane. It's very useful. You can also say, you can also look at left and right in this plane, obviously, okay? Um, so that, that is the frontal plane, uh, and you can tell that from the limb leads. Now, here at the bottom, you can see V1 to V6, and this is slicing the heart in a transverse plane, a kind of horizontal, if you can see this horizontal plane, so-called transverse plane. And, trans, and this is very good, in fact, to look, if, you, if I then show you here, here, this is now again another way of looking at it, this horizontal, you can see horizontal plane or transverse plane. Uh, you can see uh, slicing it this way, you can see again V1 to V6, and you can see again V1 to V6. So it's very useful, um, this sort of uh, looking at V1 to V6, very good, very useful to differentiate between what is happening in the right ventricle and what's happening in the left ventricle. Let me just show you what I mean now. Okay, so now we're looking again at the uh, chest, chest leads, so-called the transverse or sort of horizontal plane. I said earlier, it's very useful to differentiate between right and left. I'm just gonna make it very clear here by drawing a line, another line here. So I'm gonna draw a line here. So when we're talking about right and left, this is what actually what we're talking about, aren't we? Okay, I'm just going to uh, change the color here to red, the obvious. So when we say right, we mean this side. When we say left, we mean this side, isn't it? So again, just to make it very clear, I'll just type it out for you. So that's right. And we can make the font a bit bigger. There you go, right, okay. And this is the right we're talking about. And then obviously, this is the left we're talking about, left, okay? So right and left. So whenever you see a broad QRS complex uh, and you know that the conduction is coming from the atrium, okay? Effectively, what you're dealing with is some, fun, some form of bundle branch block. You know that, okay? And this is what we mean. This is the, this is, this is the his Purkinje system. This is the Purkinje fibers with the left, sorry, the left and the right. Um, so this is the right bundle. This is left divided by left, left divided to left anterior and left posterior fascicle. So we're, we're dealing with some kind of slowing or block of conduction down one of these fascicles. That's why you get left or right bundle branch block, right? And back to here again. So you've got right and you've got left. Uh, so you've got to pick a lead to decide which is the best way to differentiate between right side and left side. And in fact, the best lead is really, uh, leads are basically ways for you to look at the heart. And what you want to look at, imagine your eyes is in this where this blue circle is. You want to look down this line. This is the best line to look down to differentiate between right and left. Okay. And so, so the best thing to do when you're actually trying to differentiate between right and left bundle is to pick lead V1. Okay. So remember, we're looking at lead V1 because it helps differentiate between right and left because we're looking at this line here. Okay. So we're gonna what we're gonna do now is try and show you how it would look like if it's left versus right bundle branch block, okay? So here, so we're gonna deal first with right bundle branch block. So this is the right side, right? This is right bundle branch block. So what happens during cardiac conduction? Um, how does electrical activation occur um, down the ventricles when you have right bundle branch block? So firstly, you'll have conduction because the right side is blocked. You'll have conduction going down the left bundle. And then electrical conduction then moves through the myocardium towards the right. So you get this delayed activation to the right side. Now, if you look at V1, remember, I take this away. Remember, we're looking at V1 here, okay? This is, lead, this is lead V1. So we're looking along this line. This is the pattern that you will see, okay? First of all, you will notice that, I'm just gonna draw a line. You will notice that the duration of the QRS complex is longer. So this is what we're looking at. We look at duration, okay? So you can see that it's just over three small squares, okay? It's more than 120 milliseconds, so it's, it's prolonged. And it's prolonged because it takes longer for the ventricles to depolarize if you have bundle branch block, because the conduction going through the myocardium here, it's gonna take longer than if you have conduction at the same time it's going down left, it goes down right. That sort of parallel activation is much quicker then this sort of delayed activation coming from the myocardium itself. That's why the duration is longer. That's the first thing you're going to note. The duration of QRS is longer. That's why you know the QRS complex is not normal in the first place because it's broader, right? 
Then the next thing you need to look at is this, what we call the terminal portion here, this, okay? So this terminal portion, so obviously, whatever happens towards the end of the QRS complex, so this is the beginning of the QRS complex, this is towards the end of the QRS complex, okay? It's towards the end of the QRS complex. We know that the x-axis, this thing, the x-axis tells us time, okay? So towards the end of the QRS complex would be the last bit of the ventricle that is depolarized. And you can tell with right bundle branch block, the last bit of the ventricle that's going to be depolarized is the right side. And that's why you get a positive uh, complex. So you get a what's called a R prime, okay? So when you see this positive complex, it means that the, the area of the heart that is activated the last is the right, is the right side. So right bundle branch block will always give you an R prime. That's how you remember. For those of you who do not know how to differentiate, between left and right bundle branch block when you see an ECG. I know a lot of you do the narrow and William kind of way of looking at it. You know, it doesn't always work. It's better just to look, I think, to look at V1, look at the terminal portion of the complex. And if it's an R wave, then it's right bundle branch block. The reason why there's a little prime at the top is because it's the second component. So the first component is here, the second component is there. So what the second component is denotated denoted by this prime, okay? And it's capital R because this is bigger than this. The second R is bigger than the first R. So typically you get a big R and, um, it, you know, and, and obviously you get a wide QRS complex, so delayed activation, and the terminal portion of the QRS complex, the last part of the ventricle that's activated is the right side. That's why you get a positive deflection because you're looking from V1, okay? So just remember this, this sort of RSR prime pattern and that gives you right bundle branch block. All right, so that's how you can tell from the QRS complex whether it's right or left. This is right. So let's have a look at left. How would left look like? So left will be effectively the opposite, okay? So if I, if I again so show you what happens during left bundle branch block. So during left bundle branch block, uh, what you get first is activation on the right side because it goes down the right bundle, activates through the right side. And then you get delayed activation. Sorry about all these this out so you get delayed activation this time going away from v1 and because it's going away from the v1 you get this s wave can you see this s wave so again if you look at the, the qrs duration i'm just going to measure it out for you so if you measure out the qrs duration it's going to be from here to around here so it's close to four squares okay so it's closer to 160 milliseconds about 160 milliseconds so clearly much broader than um three squares, much broader than 120 milliseconds. So this is a broad QRS complex. There is delayed activation. Then the question is, is it right or left? Well, it's very simple because the terminal portion this time is an S wave. So you can see this S wave, very deep and broad S wave. So when you see the S wave, you know it's left bundle because you're looking remember from V1. S is S wave because this time the left side is activated last. So you get a left bundle branch block um, so this this sort of appearance, sort of S wave, deep S wave, uh, or sometimes you get an R, a small R wave initially, then an S wave. Um, when you see this, this is left on the branch block. Okay, so I, I hope most of you got it. So this, as you can remember, I think all of you got it earlier, right, bundle branch block. Okay, and you guys got this left bundle branch block with a, a couple of a premature atrial complexes. Okay, good. And so we know that one of the causes of um, uh, a broad QRS complex, the most common one that you probably come across is left on the branch block. Right, I'm going to ask you a, another question now. Uh, okay, I'm going to zoom this. Okay, tell me what does this ECG show? Okay, good. So I'll give you a minute. Look very carefully, okay? Okay, um, very interesting. Most people have started putting out pacing, paste. Okay, okay, very good. Um, some put, put out wide QRS complex, which is very good. Okay, very good. Okay, let me ask you a question. Look at V1 morphology. 
Does it look like left bundle branch block or right bundle branch block? Okay, good. Okay. Okay, very good. So for those of you who put down pacing, let me ask you the question. Where is it pacing from? The right heart, the right ventricle, or the left ventricle? You guys are doing really good, by the way. That's why I'm asking you all these questions. <laughs> oh, okay. someone said L, left. I, I presume they mean pacing from the left side. Is that, is that, what, is that what this meant? Okay, Dr. Ganesh said right. Okay, very good. Okay, all right, okay, very good. Thank you for all for participating. That's really good, really good range of answers. Let me try and um, uh, put it together for you, okay? And hopefully it will become clear. So if you were to look at this ECG, okay, for those of you who are very eagle-eyed, I think a lot of the reason why a lot of you started saying pacing is because some person put pacing down and then I think most of you then recognized this. You saw that there was this artifact. Let me show you. I blew up. So basically, this is a blow. This is a enlargement of V3. Okay. I think most of you saw this. Let me just draw a little circle here. For those who haven't seen it, you saw this. Just format that one second. You saw that, right? And then obviously, once you've seen it, you you can see it everywhere. It's there. It's there, it's there, and it's there, right? So these are pacing artifacts, all right? And then if I go back again, you, you can see V3, and you can also now see in V4, you can also see a little bit of it maybe in V5, you can see it in two, you can you can see it in most of the leads, once you've seen it, you can see it, right? So there is a there is an artifact that precedes each of the there is a artifact that precedes each of the QRS complex, and so very correctly a lot of you said it's a pace rhythm. Um, now there's a few things to say about this pace rhythm. Okay, number one, there is in fact. Okay, let me ask you a question rather than me saying I'm going to ask you a question. Can you see P waves? And if it is P waves, are these sinus P waves? I guess. Can most people see the P waves? Yes? Okay, I hope you can. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna circle them if you, if you haven't seen them, but hopefully it's very obvious. They are P waves, right? So they're here, and they are sinus P waves. They have the shape of um, a sinus P wave. Uh, I keep using the word sinus P wave. Uh, it just means P wave, the shape of the P wave looks like how it would look like if it's coming from the sinus node from the higher right atrium. Okay, there's a particular shape. So sinus P waves, uh, the shape of it, I'll just, and it's very important actually, I, I want you to try and kind of get your eye in to see how to, to just be able to recognize sinus P wave. Sinus P wave has this biphasic appearance. Can you see? Biphasic meaning it's initially positive and then it's negative. It's got this biphasic appearance in V1 and then it's positive in 2, 3 and ABF. So you can see in fact that there are P waves, right? Very clearly, there are P waves. So what's happening here is in fact, a mode of pacing where the pacemaker is sensing the pacemaker is sensing the p wave so it's sensing the atrial activity atrial depolarization and then following that it's pacing the ventricle so it's a sense v pace okay so ventricular pacing is tracking the patient's um, sinus activity and we generally program pacemakers to do this if the patient has got intact sinus node function but perhaps have av block because of complete heart block in which case, what we want is we want to sense from the patient's own atrial activity, we want to sense the P wave and then pace the ventricle. So this is indeed a pace rhythm, A sense B pacing. But it's very interesting that, you know, so the question really is, if you think about it, why does pace rhythm give you, in this case, why does it give you a, a, a broad QRS complex? Uh, in this case, a lot of you have said it looks like left bundle branch block. And how can you tell where the pacing is from? Okay, so now I want to give another concept here now. Okay, so you're quite right, it's pace rhythm. And I want to give a concept, and I'm going to show you these two pictures. So you can see on the left hand side is a leaf, obviously. And the right hand side is not a leaf, but it looks like a leaf. 
This is like a kind of a leaf insect. Okay. Now, if you look at it from afar, they look very similar, but they're clearly different things. So what I want you to get in the, get into the habit of understanding is this concept. Okay. You can have complexes, QRS complexes that look that way because it is due to left bundle branch block. Or you can have complexes that look like left bundle branch block, but in fact, it's not due to left bundle branch block. This is what we call left bundle branch block like morphology. Okay, so left bundle branch block, left bundle branch block like morphology. What, what do I mean by this? So clearly, this is a pace rhythm, right? It's not due to left bundle branch block. This, this rhythm is pace rhythm. It's not left bundle branch block, but it looks like left bundle branch block. The morphology looks like left bundle branch block. So we call that this is a pace rhythm with the curious complex being broad and having the appearance of left bundle branch block, left bundle branch block like morphology. And that in fact signifies right ventricular pacing. And I'm gonna explain to you why, how that, how that is the case. So here, so we're gonna look at this now. So the top left corner, where I'm kind of circling my, my cursor here. This is what I went through with you earlier. Do you remember? I said, you know, you look at V1, that's V1. I said, you've got left bottom branch block, so you get delayed activation to the left side and you get this S wave, right? You remember that, okay. Now, what happens during ventricular pacing? So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. What happens during ventricular pacing is you have let's say in this case, which is the case that you've seen earlier, it's right ventricular pacing. So you've got a pacing lead. Normally it's placed somewhere around here near the apex. Okay. And when we pace the ventricle, what you get is again, a very similar appearance where you get delayed activation in the left side, because you're pacing from the right side, you get delayed activation on the left side. So in fact, you get the similar S pattern, S wave, you get the similar S wave at the terminal portion of the QRS complex, okay? So when you pace from the right ventricle, you get an appearance that looks like left bundle branch block, a left bundle branch block like morphology, okay? Now, if you look very carefully, now I've kind of put two of the leads, I've, I've put two of the ECGs side by side now, top, well, not side by side, top and bottom, okay? So the top here is actually a patient with left bundle branch block. The bottom here is someone with paced rhythm from the right ventricle. And you can see, look at the QRS complex. They look very similar, but they're not the same. The, the bottom here, this down here is not, this QRS complex appearance is not actually due to left bundle branch block because we know it's actually a pace rhythm, but it just looks like left bundle branch block. And if you see something that looks like left bundle branch block, you know, in fact, its ventricle origin is likely to come from the right side. And that's why you gotta, it looks like the left side is delayed. All right. If you look through all the leads, you can get some clues. Look, two, three AV have here. Can you see they're all negative? Whereas here it isn't. Here it is all negative. Why? Remember I said to you earlier, remember here, I'm going to go back up here again. I mentioned to you that the um, two, three ABF, which are here, is very good at telling you where ventricular activation is happening from bottom, top to bottom or bottom to top. If it's negative, it means it's going away from the bottom. It's going away from the bottom. And that's not surprising because when we place these leads, the leads are generally pointed inferiorly. So it's pacing from the bottom ventricle and you get activation going to the top. Okay. So you can tell it's actually the opposite direction as you would expect from activation from the node down to the ventricle. So, and that's not surprising because this is ventricular pacing. So that's the kind of concept where you can have complexes that look like particular bundle branch block morphology, but it's not actually due to bundle branch block. In this case, it's due to pacing. And if you get left bundle branch block like morphology, then it's showing you that it's coming from the right side. It's coming from the right ventricle. In this case, a pace rhythm from the right ventricle. Is that clear so far? All right, let me give you another ECG. What does this ECG show? I'll give you again another minute.
Okay, very good. Fantastic. I think that the, the, the top two answers are absolutely correct. Okay, so well done. So Dr. Ganesh has come, come out with delta waves, and that's absolutely correct. You can see delta waves. And uh, Ilona has come up with left bundle branch block light morphology, which is also correct. Absolutely. So this basically shows this. I'm just drawn, just take this off. Sorry about this. I drew some pictures earlier. <laughs> we'll just take this off. It's very confusing for you. All right. So I've zoomed up. Um, take that off just to. I've zoomed in on V1, and you can see this. And that's what I was trying to show earlier. Can you see this kind of um, this initial kind of uh, what we call slurring uh, of the QRS complex? So you can see the slope is not as steep as the. So this is the actual. You can see this the second line here is where you would expect this, the normal steepness of the QRS complex. This initial part, which is my highlighter here in pen here. So I'm going to just draw it out. So this is the delta wave. This thing here you can see. So this sort of initial part of the QRS complex in blue, that's the delta wave, okay? I can show you again. Can you see that bit there? That's the delta wave, right? So whenever you see a delta wave, then that's when you suspect could this be pre-excitation, right? Um, yes, the PR interval is also short, obviously. Um, you, you don't always, the PR intervals may not be so short in some patients, um, but typically you will see a short PR interval. The main, the main thing here is actually the, um, uh, the, the sort of the presence of this sort of Delta wave, okay, which you can see there, and you can actually see they're they're everywhere once you've paid attention to it. Now, um, uh, this type one, type two, uh, this is interesting. Uh, Sanjeev has mentioned type one. We can debate about whether it is type one or not uh, in a minute. But more importantly, I want you to apply your knowledge based on what I've taught you so far. Ilona has mentioned this is this has got a left bundle like appearance. Everyone agrees with me. This looks like left bundle, right? Look at V one. It's got a left bundle appearance, right? It's got this S wave appearance, right? Very deep S wave. So if if so, can I ask you where is the where is the accessory pathway? Because when you see a delta wave, you're talking about accessory pathways, right? So where is the accessory pathway? So you've got, you've got 50, 50 choices and a 50, 50 chance. You can either say right or left. So it's going to be right or it's going to be left. Okay. Your first answers are coming in. Okay. Great. Fantastic. Brilliant. Most of you have put down right. And that's absolutely right. Um, same principle. The right side is activated first. So you get a left button branch block like morphology, which is what you see here. And so this is another reason why, and I, I, so I'm going to come back to Sanjeev's um, statement in a minute. So she's put down a few things. He's also put down long QT and type one. So I'm going to come to that in a minute, but I just want to show this explanation first. Okay. So another cause for um, a broad QRS complex is pre-excitation. Okay. So in this case, it's a right-sided accessory pathway. And because it's right-sided, similarly again here, hopefully this is now obvious. Because it's got this right side of the pathway, so the right ventricle is activated first. So you get a, you have a relatively delayed activation in the left side, and therefore you get a left bundle branch block like morphology. So anytime you see something that looks like left bundle, uh, then you can you have to suspect the right side is activated first. The right side could be activated first previously, as we showed, because of pacing. But in fact, another way the right side could be activated first is the presence of an accessory pathway, causing the right ventricle to be activated first, and that's why you get a left bundle-like appearance due to pre-excitation. Now, okay, back to Sanjeev's point. Uh, let me talk about type one, type two first. So some of you um, might come across this, type one, type two, move past white. It's a way, you know, some textbook or some people have used to try and discri discriminate or differentiate between what's a left-sided pathway and what's a right-sided pathway. Now, typically when people say type one, they generally mean a left-sided pathway and if it's uh, type two is generally a right side of pathway, um, but really it's not. Re I don't find describing it as type one, type two being that helpful because, in fact, you know it's a little bit more complicated than that. Pathways can be more than just left and right. You can also describe them as being anterior, posterior, septal, for example. And so it's a it's a very kind of very crude way of differentiating pathways into into this binary 
you know, left or right. It's better to actually try to understand the axis to look at the where the delta wave is pointing and from there work out the rough location it's originating from. So you've got to imagine there is the tricuspid valve and the mitral valve, and it can happen anywhere along this ring, this annulus between the, the atrium and the ventricle. Okay, accessory pathways are in effect just a, a, a an abnormal electrical connect, connection from the atrium to the ventricle. Um, so it is an oversimplification to call it type one or type two, but I know that a lot of people, a lot of textbooks do use this discriminant this this terminology. So I'm just covering that. Sanjeev also mentions this QT. I've already said earlier, and I haven't really elaborated very much, but maybe this is a good time to to talk about it. Remember this slide I showed you earlier. I said that if you have abnormalities in ventricular depolarization, you will you can very much expect also for there to be abnormalities in ventricular repolarization. Why? Because repolarization is, event, is an event that happens after depolarization. So if your initial event is already abnormal, it's very likely that your second event, the following that initial event, is also going to be abnormal. So there's this concept of why we don't actually specifically say the SD segments is either elevated or not in left on the branch block. I, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but we don't. So let me give you an example, right? If I if I go back to this left on the branch block ECG that you've seen earlier, this one, okay? If you look at this ECG, sometimes when I show this ECG to people, they tell me there's ST elevation, right? You, yeah, there, there is J point elevation, clearly. You can see that the J point is elevated. You can see that the ST segments here look at normal, but we don't generally talk about ST segments when we see left on the branch block. We don't because the initial event, the ventricular depolarization is also is already very abnormal. So in that case, it's not it's not very helpful to talk about the T waves or the ST segment or the J point. All of that is gonna this is how the J point and the, the T wave will look typically with left on the branch block, this sort of pattern. So when we see that, it just makes sense just to call it left on the branch block and not make any further comments about repolarization. Okay. It's generally you just describe this as left on the branch block. All right, so really, that's why we don't really talk about QT interval either when we, when we have abnormal depolarization, because the whole thing is not going to be valid measurement. So I hope that answers Sanjeev's uh, point there. All right. Okay. Where was I? So I just said, um, oh, sorry, wrong one. I've kind of gone too fast. So I've just said that pre excitation is a cause for. Um, it's a cause for uh, uh, a broad curious complex, yeah? And you very nicely applied the sort of bundle branch block morphology to localize where the accessory pathway is. So let me give you another one, okay? First of all, uh, what is this show? I'll give you a minute. Okay, so someone has come out saying that this particular complex looks like left bundle. Absolutely correct. You guys are very good at this. But can you tell me what is the rhythm here? What 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 is this left bundle complex due to? So you're basically talking about this, right? You're talking about this complex, which is correct. It has got a left bundle branch block like morphology. But what is this complex? What is this complex due to? Is it is it actually left on the branch block, do we think? Or could it be something else? Bear that in mind. Okay, in fact, this was done, this was a patient that I put on the treadmill. Okay, so this is the patient's baseline ECG. Uh, someone now mentioned ST elevation. We'll talk about that. I think I've I thought I covered that earlier, but I'll cover it again later. So when the patient was exercising, he went into this rhythm. Oh, yeah, Tawanda, that's okay, that's very good. So you think this is PVC, yeah, very good. And so what is this then?
Yeah, very good. I think most of you starting to come out with the answer. So indeed, this is okay. So now, um, absolutely. Now, one of the things that you're taught before, I guess, uh, I'm sure in the past, is trying to um, differentiate between what's called SVT with aberrancy or so-called SVT with bundle branch block and VT, okay? Um, and I hope it becomes apparent now why they can look the same, okay? SVT with aberrancy or SVT with bundle branch block means that it's a bit like the sinus rhythm with bundle branch block that you saw earlier, okay? It's basically the, the fast rhythm is coming from above the ventricle and the reason why the curious complex is there is broad is because of bundle branch block, the aberrancy. Um, this is VT rather than SVT with aberrancy. Why? Because if you look, look the same, remember the paced rhythm we saw earlier, where you saw that the, um, uh, so you, you know, I, I was mentioning about the axis and, and how you could, how you could look and differentiate. Here, the axes are all positive, okay? They're, all of them are positive. But if you look at all the kind of clues available, um, in fact, if you look at this, for example, uh, these, th these are indeed um, PVCs, okay? So these are, these are, uh, uh, ectopic beats. Okay, so I think who was correct? Uh, Tawanda, yeah, absolutely. These are PVCs. And when you get, so it's actually, there's a kind of aut automatic focus from somewhere near the right ventricle. And this particular patient has got um, a very kind of catecholaminergic driven uh, uh, ectopic activity. So when you actually exercise the patient, um, it goes into this sort of, uh, the, the single activity becomes kind of, um, sustained and you get this VT appearance, okay? Um, and this is, is that this is another reason why you would get, um, this is another reason why you get a broad QRS complex. So like so, okay? Uh, so this is another reason why you get a QRS complex, a broad QRS complex because of VT. So in this case, you will have a source of um, fast rhythm coming from the right side and you will also get this left bundle branch block like morphology. It's another reason why you get VT. In fact, this is this is much clearer. So this one, this one has got all of the other signs to help different. This one can be challenging, okay? Because you could, it's it's relatively narrow. Sometimes you could think, could this be um, uh, uh, bundle branch block morphology? But in fact, this patient did have VT. Um, are there any kind of clues behind it? Uh, let's 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 use this as a good example as kind of the clues that you can use to differentiate between VT and SVT with aberrancy, okay? So everyone happy that this is VT, by the way, this is another broad complex tachycardia, yeah? So this one, what kind of morphology is this one? So if this has got the, what kind of morphology this complex here? Okay, everyone had a good look at this. So this is right bundle, right? Can you see? I'm not sure if it's obvious to you. Uh, it's not as obvious as the previous one, I guess, because it doesn't have two. It doesn't have two. Uh, no, this is this is actually uh, uh, this is a VT as well. This one. Let me let me go through why. Okay, but um, this one also, if you can see, it's also got. It looks a bit different because the other one you can see. I guess you can see two different. So the other one, when you look at right bundle here. You, you could see kind of like two different peaks, right? Here, it's all kind of merged into one. So I can see why some of you might find it a little bit confusing. But the important thing is if you look at the terminal portion, in fact, all of this complex is an R wave. It's a one big R wave, this, the whole thing, there's no S wave at all. So this is, this, this, this is a right bundle appearance because everything is an R, okay? You can maybe see there's a second component here, but in any case, what it is is that you can see that the whole complex is an R wave. So if you see that, that means essentially it's coming from the left side. It's a right bundle morphology. This is a right bundle morphology. So Dr. Garnish is correct there. 
um, and it's coming from the left side. And this is actually VT. It's not pacing, uh, it's VT. Um, wh why do I know it's VT? Um, so do you know what these beats are, if I kind of um, circle them? What are these beats called? You know, what are these beats? They're narrower. They don't interrupt the tachycardia. There's another one here. What are these, woo, sorry. What, what are these beats called? Can you see that now? So can you see that there are these uh, narrower complex interspe interspersed between this tachycardia? Have you heard of capture beats or fusion beats? Okay, so whenever you see capture beats or fusion beats in a tachycardia, in a broad complex tachycardia, that's a sign that you're dealing with VT, okay? Um, you can also see that the axis is very bizarre. It's positive in AVR. It's got like a sort of a northwest axis. It's, um, it's very, very broad, okay? And so altogether, this is, this is actually VT. I mean, the kind of things that everyone has put down, bundle branch block, casing, accessory pathways, these are all differential diagnosis. In fact, all of these can give you a broad, complex tachycardia, can give you a broad, broad, complex rhythm. And that's what I was trying to cover with this talk, to show you the possibilities to kind of consider when you see a broad QRS complex and trying to work out where it's coming from. They can all burn a broad block, pacing, pre-excitation or accessory pathways, ventricular arrhythmia. All these are causes for a broad QRS complex. It just means that the ventricular activation is happening from one ventricle and then spray into the other ventricle. You're not getting normal hispagingy system activation of the ventricle. So therefore, the curious complex is broader. So these are all differential diagnoses. And the fact is, it's good that all of you have put that down as possible differential diagnoses. The key here, I guess, is how you differentiate between them, right? And there are some clues that you can use. And what are the clues? In this case, because there are, these are called um, uh, fusion beats, Okay, fusion beats just means um, you get a beat coming from the atrium that is, so it affects like a sinus beat. So the ventricular tachycardia is going, 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 going on. And then you have a beat that just, just interrupts it briefly. And you have a beat that, which looks narrow, okay? But the beat doesn't actually interrupt the tachycardia itself. And this is a proof, this is, show, this is showing that the ventricle is, um, the, ventricle, the ventricle is basically beating independently of the atrium. So in fact, this is a ventricular tachycardia, ventricular arrhythmia. Just look it up, it's a bit difficult for me to explain it all, but if you look up capture fusion beats as a proof of a rhythm being ventricular tachycardia, you, you should be able to read more explanation about it. Capture of fusion beat is a sign of what we call VA dissociation. So the ventricular activity is dissociated from the atrium. And, and, and when you see VA dissociation, it's proof that the rhythm that you're dealing with is ventricular tachycardia. So this, because there is this presence of sort of capture fusion beats, um, therefore this is ventricular tachycardia, plus the very abnormal axis and the very broad QRS complex. These are all signs that what we're dealing with here, in fact, is ventricular tachycardia, rather than say pacing or accessory pathway or anything else like that. So although you put it down, well done, it is not, it is actually ventricular tachycardia. And so because it's got a right bundle branch block morphology, which ventricle is this VT coming from? So you really put it down anyway. Okay, it's coming from the left side. Okay, left side of VT, exactly. Left side of VT will give you um, a right bundle branch block morphology VT. And uh, that's how it looks like. So if you have a left side of VT, the right side will be delayed, will give you a right bundle branch block like morphology. So, I've gone through quite a lot here. Don't worry so much if you find yourself asking, oh, how am I going to differentiate all this? It's very, very confusing. I, I, I still don't really know how to differentiate between pace rhythm, pre-excitation, VT, bundle branch block. This is too much. I hope it doesn't make you feel like that, okay? I just want to show you all the possibilities, okay? Um, because some people get confused when the word bundle branch block is kind of used, even in cases like VT or in cases like pacing. You know, why, why is the word bundle branch block being used? I just want to explain to you, hopefully it makes sense to you. We use it simply in this manner, basically to describe the appearance of the ECG. There are those which 
are due to bundle branch block itself. Okay, and sometimes the appearance of broad queue is complex. It's not actually due to bundle branch block. They just look they're due to something else like pacing, pre excitation, VT. Okay, but they but from the appearance itself, normally they will adopt one or the other appearance. Sometimes they can be a little bit non-specific. Okay, but normally it will look either like a left or like a right bundle, and it's because of the nature where it's coming from. It will look more clearly from the left or the right if it's if activation is clearly starting from one side or the other. You can appreciate if it's, it, it, you can sometimes get things happening from the septum. You can appreciate in those situations that the QRS complex might be narrower and may not adopt a very specific bundle branch block like appearance, okay? But I hope you can understand the concept behind why QRS complex looks the way they look like. And also understand that when you have abnormal depolarization, when the QRS complex looks abnormal, you can't really comment much about the ST segment or the T wave because it's going to be abnormal as well, right? And you can understand also that there are lots of reasons why the QRS complex may be broad, because often when I show my students a QRS complex that looks abnormal, they would just say things like ischemia, you know, infarction, ST elevation, they like saying that. In fact, there's more than one, there's more reasons for their appearance besides ischemia, infarction, ST elevation, okay? We're just showing you all the other possible examples, all right? So we're going to draw to a close. It's coming up to an hour. Any questions? I'm not necessarily expecting you that you're going to be in all cases be able to differentiate between everything, but at least keep that in mind. There are normally some clues, like for example, the pacing ECG, there's pacing artifact. Okay, for example, the VT, there's a capture and fusion beads. If you see a broad complex tachycardia, always assume it's VT until proven otherwise. That's probably the, the most easy. SVT and VT in one slide. Um, okay, it's kind of. Um, uh, I have to say, this particular one, if you would ask me, are there any particular clues to show that? So this is the SVT. I don't really have one with the, um, I don't really have one with uh, uh, one with aberrancy. I think probably best, I, I don't really have the slides to completely, completely compare the two for you. This is in fact, this particular VT is actually an outflow track VT, this one. It's a right ventricle outflow track, and it's near, it is near the septum, which is why it looks quite narrow. This is not a very good example to show you the difference between bundle branch block uh, with aberrancy and VT, actually. So I'm not going to compare the two. This is actually a, it's positive throughout here, two, three near vessels coming from high to low. This is a, in fact, the patient has got right ventricular outflow track, which is a very common source of um, tachycardia, uh, RVOT tachycardia. It's kind of VT, but this is not such a good example. Maybe I should have chosen, chosen one with much clearer differences in axis. Um, so I'm not going to compare it compare here with you. Okay, have a look. Have a look. There are other resources. Um, there are some other. Uh, you, you can look up. There are, are some other sort of features you can look at to try and see if something is aberrancy or not. Um, it can be difficult. Look at baseline ECG. Sometimes patients will have bundle branch block even at baseline. But obviously, you can also get rate what's called rate related bundle branch block sometimes people only develop bundle branch block at certain higher rates from the atrium so that can be confusing okay that can be confusing can be difficult to differentiate uh left bundle branch block with excess product should always be Ilona saying left bundle branch with excess product should be when we see delta wave um no i hope this is, so i'm just going to clarify the thing about um bundle branch block and accessory pathways okay you don't always, when we say about bundle branch block, when I was using bundle branch block as a kind of, when I used it in this context here, I was just trying to, to tell you, I was just trying to sell the concept that you can have something that looks like bundle branch block that is not due to bundle branch block, okay? The simple answer is the ECG appearance with pre-excitation with delta wave can vary depending on where the delta wave, depending on where the accessory pathway is located, okay? It can it can look it can be all sorts of different types of ECG um, morphology. Uh, the delta wave axis can be different. It all depends. But if the if you, if the complex looks a bit because the delta wave the complex looks a bit like a particular shape, looks a bit like a left bundle or right bundle, then you can start thinking where in the where in the ventricle is this accessory pathway plugged in. So if the complex has more of a say type one, which is someone mentioned type one will pass and white, so more of an R like a positive R, okay in V one, then you you can actually see tell that it's more likely to be a right side of the pathway. But pathways are actually more complicated than that because it, it, pathways, when you see the QRS complex, are in effect, it's a fused beat. It's actually a fused beat. 
what I would refer to you to is to look at, if you look up pathway localization, pathway localization, you just put accessory pathway localization ECG on your Google, um, you're going to see some algorithms that you can use. They're basically like step by step tells you, you know, if this is possible negative, where to look at, where to look at. Um, look at the ESC guidance. That's actually a very good one. Actually, it tells you about patterns. You know, is it? It tells you to look at different different leads and look at the axis if it's positive negative to help localize between right and left, between between anterior and posterior. So that would be a, a better way to try to understand localization of pathway. I don't want you to get too hung up about that here. I just want to introduce the concept, the concept of how these different um, reasons, these different rather etiologies or mechanisms can give you a broad caress complex. Okay. Right, I'm going to stop there. I hope it's not too much. I hope you found it useful. Please, um, please do give feedback. Okay, this is really, like I said, just a kind of a way of hope, hopefully allowing you to see things a little differently. It's not meant to be completely comprehensive. It's too much to teach, really, uh, in just an hour. Uh, but hopefully, you've got the concept. If you're if you if you're interested, I um, you know there are some further readings. Um, so uh, maybe next time around, I'll give you a, a little list, list uh, of, of things that you can look into. So then for the next session, I'll give you, next session, I think will be the final session. I'll give you a, a list of reading materials that you can look at. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing and finish up.